Okay, one thing I think I need to make blazingly apparent is that this is going to take more than 12 days. Like, why would I start with a target end date of the 22nd? But two and more to today's point, Chuck Bryant of the Movie Crush podcast begins his diehard conversation by saying, quote, it's such an efficient script. It runs like a Swiss watch from the very first scene. Which is remarkable, because according to Robert Davi, who plays Agent Johnson. I'm Agent Johnson. This is Special Agent Johnson. Oh. How you doing? Ah, I'm sorry, Special Agent Johnson. Rewrites were coming in pretty much the entire time he was on set, and his character doesn't appear until three quarters of the way in. Not that they shot the scenes in order, of course. As we talked about on day two, McTiernan just kind of picked a point and let the actors go from there. But still, the picture painted in Die Hard and Oral History makes it seem more like a crowdsourced improv comedy than a major studio motion picture. Enough jokes. We'll talk about the funness of Die Hard later, but for now, let's just say it's good. Because original screenwriter Jeb Stewart's last version of the script from October 1987 was a little heavy. Dan Mazur, one of Joel Silver's script readers, pretty adeptly sums it up as more of a 70s film. What are you talking about? And even then, it was still a Happy Little Elves sequel compared to the original book, Roderick Thorpe's Nothing Lasts Forever. Its predecessor, The Detective, was made into one of the first films to deal with adult themes like homosexuality, albeit pretty ham-handedly to a modern audience. You're not gonna tell my parents, are you? With Frank Sinatra in the lead role, The Detective achieved moderate success, and so the manuscript for its follow-up had been kicking around Hollywood for over a decade, earning rave script analyst reviews like, whatever the point of this novel is, it escapes me, not recommended. Plot-wise, there is still a police detective in a tall building, but because Sinatra was still in consideration, this detective is very old, and the terrorists are just terrorists, and the female lead is the detective's daughter, and everybody dies. Yay. The published novel revises this somewhat, everyone but the detective dies, but for reasons that seem to escape even him, Mazur flagged it as consider in 1986. Fox optioned it and tasked the screenplay to 29-year-old Stanford grad Jeb Stewart, who, occupying a cramped bungalow while, quote, married and a quarter million in debt, reimagined the film's heart as the story of a 30-year-old who should have said sorry to his wife. Go figure. Still, the story remained dark and Steven D'Souza from 48 Hours and ugh, Commando was brought in to promptly yank it much too far in the other direction, resulting in 145 pages of sprawl fleshed out with additions like a pretty stewardess, cute girl, Pretty Girl, and groan-inducing stage direction like McLean smiles with just enough of a sigh to know that he's as wistful about things that might have been as she is. Which I will still tolerate in exchange for the occasional Welcome to the party, pal! I don't know how the Swiss make their watches, but I'm pretty sure it's not like this. And yet for all that contorted mishmash of authors and stories and ideas and drafts, through the curation of Silver, McTiernan, Degovia, DeBont, and Uriosti, it really does turn out a finished product that ticks through its beats like a meticulous hand-wrought timepiece. More on that tomorrow. I'm Cosmo Catalano. Until next time, yippee ki motherfucker. Adjectives on the typewriter, he moves his words.